HER2, as we've alluded to, is a protein that's on the cell surface. And we know if you have uh, an excessive number of copies of the HER2 protein or amplification of the gene, which should translate to many copies, that you would benefit from trastuzumab. So we know that that's clinical standard of care. But the HER2 protein is also um, a source of these immunogenic peptides. So that's what E75 is. It's a piece of the HER2 protein. So the protein itself is many amino acids long, but the E75 is just a nine amino acid sequence that is able to be presented by the dendritic cells or other antigen presenting cells to be recognized by the immune system. And so E75 actually, if you were to take the whole HER2 sequence and put it into a computer algorithm that predicts how these nine amino acid sequences will be bound and presented to the immune system, E75 comes out as the winner meaning it has the appropriate sequence, specifically the appropriate amino acids that residues two and nine, which are what we refer to as the anchor residues, so that it is the best peptide with respect to presentation by antigen presenting cells to be basically shown to the T cells or to the immune cells. So that's what E75 is. Um, with respect to where it fits in with the whole HER2 story, as I alluded to in the presentation, one thing that I always emphasize is that E75, the vaccine, is actually effective in patients with any degree of HER2 expression. All you need to do is teach the immune system to recognize a little bit of HER2. So it works in women with any degree of HER2 expression on their tumors, specifically 1 plus, 2 plus, or 3 plus. They don't have to be the 3 plus that we require for trastuzumab. So whereas about 20 to 25 percent of patients will be 3 plus and will get trastuzumab, if you also include the 1 plus, 2 plus patients, you're, you're getting another 70 to 80 percent of the patients with, her, with breast cancer.